Okay, so now we're going to talk about planning and budgeting. And so essentially, and really what we're talking about more is the budgeting than anything else. And so, you know, the budgeting is, is part of the planning process. And it's, you know, you've got the long-term strat strategic plan, and then you have maybe medium term strategic plans that um, help you get to the long-term plan but you know eventually you've got to get down to the immediate uh, plan that gets you to the medium and long-term plans and it's that immediate plan for the next year that becomes the budget so the budget is simply the uh, immediate plan reduced to numbers, to dollars. <clears throat> and so the budget is simply the plan stated in financial terms of how the organization expects to carry out its activities and meet the financial goals established in the pro planning process. So we have this master budget and usually there is a committee, the budget committee that's formed to bring all the pieces together of the master budget. So a master budget is part of an overall organization plan for the next year made up of three components. The organization's goals for the year. Again, this is all, you know, at least the, the master budget is the organization's goals for the year, but they should be in line with the overall goals, long-term and medium-term. Uh, the strategic long-term range profit plan and the tactical short range profit plan as well. And so the organization's goals are laid out in broad terms. Uh, At some point, they have to outline specific steps to require to achieve the organization's goals. And so those are expressed in a strategic long-term plan. And as far as the plan for the coming year, that's the master budget. So this get, kind of gives you an idea of how we develop a master budget. It's part of the overall plan, strategic plan. It involves individuals. And again, these budgets are used many times in performance evaluations. So the the human condition, I guess you might say, has to be taken into consideration. Their own goals and values need to be aligned with the, the companies. And so if you recall, we talked about goal congruence last time so that the individual's goals are the same as the organization's goals. Uh, one way to, to bring about goal congruence is to have what's called participative budgeting. This allows the lower and middle uh, rung employees to participate in the budgeting process uh, by doing so, the hope is that they will be on board with 
the short-term uh, goals involved in the budget. So where do you start this master budget? Well, there's certain parts of the budget over which the company has control over things, and then there's things that the company has less control over. Uh, probably the, the one place where companies don't have much control over is what their forecasted sales for next year will, will be. Um, and so there's different ways, well, regardless, I mean, even if it is out of their control, somehow they have to figure out how to do this, how to uh, come up with forecasted sales for the year. So even, it's, even if it's the most difficult, it's usually the first thing that companies do. Everything else in the budget is based upon the forecasted sales for the year. And so for that reason, it's the first thing that has to be considered in the master budget. How do you do it? Well, probably the fastest and easiest way is to simply ask those involved in sales what they predict sales to be. They're, they're close to the customers. They know what their customers' needs will be for the, the upcoming year by asking, by knowing. So that's usually the first place to start. <clears throat> now you could um, supplement that information with such things as market research, something called a Delphi technique, which has to do with trying to reduce bias in estimates by making things uh, anonymous in a group setting so that people uh, don't feel, well, they'll feel encouraged to participate without uh, the threat of any uh, blowback if, you know, maybe someone who else, uh, someone else who's on the, uh, the same committee uh, might, you know, might be in a higher position that, you know, if they don't agree with them, they might dominate the, the argument. Um, trend analysis and uh, something called e econometric models that's dealing with statistical type information. And I think the book indicates that for the most part, companies fall back on sales staff and their experience and knowledge to at least get uh, things going and that they're actually a better predictor than these other types of methods. All right, so we have a, an example here of this company that makes uh, like pants. Um, and so the, the task force arrives at a following sales budget after speaking with the sales manager uh, for the next budget year, I think what they did is they got the sales manager to a concert, well, to an estimate of seven million dollars for the year, um, and you know part of the problem with that number is that um, since 
the uh, sales manager is compensated with a salary as well as um, a bonus if sales are above a certain amount, <clears throat> then they know that the sales manager is going to be fairly conservative in their estimates so that they know that they can reach um, the goal of sales. However, you know, the sales manager can't make it too small because if, if the number's too small and sales turn out to be a lot more, the, the company could be in real problems because they've, as you will see, they will plan for production at a much smaller scale than what they probably should have. And so the bottom line is that the budgeting task force knows that the sales manager is somewhat conservative, having dealt with her in the past. And so even though she estimates seven million because of their uh, knowledge of her conservatism in her numbers and maybe some personal bias uh, as well, they estimate 7.2 million. <clears throat> they estimate a unit sales price of $45 and unit sales of 160,000. All right, so everything else involves or revolves around the sales budget. From the sales budget, now that you know that uh, the forecasted uh, unit sales are 160,000. You can now take and pre prepare a production budget. And so, part of what you have to do when you prepare a uh, production budget is you have to figure out not only how many units you're going to produce per year but usually there's going to be an excess that you produce so that you have uh, a certain amount in ending inventory just just in case you sell more than what you planned on and so uh, as they indicate, they're, they're taking and manipulating this formula, beginning balance plus transfers in minus transfers out equals ending balance. And so how this relates to uh, forecasting production is uh, you're, you're going to have to produce not only what you plan on selling, but what you plan on having an ending inventory. So uh, the number here is 160,000 sales and add to that in this case they want 15,000 in uh, ending inventory and they expect to have 5,000 in beginning inventory so you take the the number you you plan on sell, selling plus the amount you ha, have or you want in ending inventory and from those numbers you subtract the beginning inventory to get your required production so here that's 160,000 plus the 15,000 units you plan on ending in, in, in ending inventory minus the 5,000 units of beginning inventory so that equals 170,000 units that the company is going to have to produce during the year. Now notice here this is a yearly production budget and the book doesn't really talk about it but you, you need to know that uh, normally in, in companies they're going to have and again this is the master budget they're normally going to have uh, more detailed budget information 
uh, probably at least once a month, monthly, and maybe even weekly production budgets. But that can easily be done once you have this information. You can you can take in uh, base monthly budgets upon what you see as the sales trends for the company. You know, you're going to have some times of year when you're going to have more sales than other times. You're going to have some down times. So all that needs to be allowed for in a more detailed budget. All right, so now that we know how many number of units we plan to produce, we can take and figure out what we need to uh, purchase during the year as far as raw materials. And so here, in this case, what we have, we have uh, a situation here where the product is made up of two types of cotton. Uh, just plain old cotton and fine cotton. And taking the beginning inventory <clears throat> of that as well as the beginning of the cotton as well as the beginning and ending inventory of the fine cotton. Um, and the amount of each, well the amount of material of each kind to make a unit of product here and the cost per yard they can figure out what they need to purchase during the year. If you look in the book I don't think they have it here. Let's check. Nope. But here what they're looking at doing is they're looking at, at uh, needing 170,000 units of cotton and it takes three yards of cotton to make one unit and so they know also the cost <laughs> so as far as the number of yards they need it's three yards times 170,000 units. And then, so that's 510,000 yards. And to that number, you add the uh, 15. Thousand yards that they already have, or excuse me, that they uh, want to have an ending inventory, and subtract the beginning inventory of 10,000 yards. And what they come up with is that they need 515,000 yards of cotton at three three dollars per yard. So they know that 515,000 at three dollars per yard is one million five hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. As far as fine cotton is concerned, they they know that they it, it takes 0.2 yards of fine cotton to make a unit. So they take the 170,000 times 0.2 yards. So that's uh, 34,000 yards. You add that to the beginning or the ending inventory, so you come up with 35,000 and subtract beginning inventory of 1,000. So bottom line is you end up needing 34,000 yards of fine cotton. And at $5 per yard, the cost of fine cotton for the year is 170,000. You add those up, you come up with a total uh, sum of raw materials of one million seven hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. So here is the number of units to be produced. So you've got your direct materials. <laughs>
The next thing that they look at is the direct labor budget. They know, and that's on page 510, they know that it takes um, a half hour of direct labor to make one unit. And if they need 170,000 units, they know that it's going to take uh, total direct labor hours of 85,000 hours. And the direct labor cost per hour is $22 per hour. And so the total direct labor cost budgeted is 1,870,000. So that's a pretty, pretty easy number to figure out. And then factory overhead, all those indirect labor, indirect cost and other things such as depreciation on machines, uh, rent of the manufacturing facility, utilities of the manufacturing facility, etc., etc. Insurance, all that has to be considered. And so again, looking at page 511, exhibit 13.5, Let's see if they include any of this. Oh, okay, so here's the direct materials example. And so they take these numbers and they put them in for the amount of the 170,000 units. And here's those numbers I mentioned. Here's the direct labor budget. And overhead. So what they do is they uh, take and figure out the amount of overhead here they have uh, total variable overhead <clears throat> in direct materials and supplies at 30 cents per unit. They multiply that time as, times 170,000. Uh, materials handling at 40 cents per unit. They multiply that times 170,000 units. And then other indirect labor at 10 cents per unit. And so that's your total variable overhead. And then you have all your fixed manufacturing overhead and you can see that those all are things that are related to manufacturing indirectly and so total manufacturing overhead for the year six hundred and eighty thousand dollars and so now you have what you need all the elements direct materials direct labor and uh, factory overhead to uh, prepare your cost of goods sold budget. And so here, you, you're just placing the numbers from your uh, direct materials purchases budget, uh, your direct labor budget, and your manufacturing overhead into this cost of goods sold budget and coming up with the cost of goods sold. Now, before you can actually prepare a uh, budgeted income statement, you still have to figure out uh, sales, general and administrative expenses. So you've got to do that budget as well. They call it here a marketing and administrative budget. And again, some of the costs are variable, some are most are fixed, and of course, all the administrative costs are what they are, all fixed. So, as far as the variable marketing costs, you've got sales commissions, so that varies with the level of sales, and then other manufacturing costs as well. I don't think they identify what those are, but... Uh, you know, it might be dealing with uh, the level of um, something dealing with the level of sales. Not sure what. 
and then you got your fixed marketing costs which are sales salaries advertising and then other and then all those administrative costs are all fixed and so from that you have your total budgeted marketing and administrative costs and so now you have all the numbers you need to plug into a budgeted income statement and so here you have your sales 7.2 million your cost of goods sold coming from your cost of goods sold statement your marketing and administrative costs coming from your uh, marketing and administrative budget you got your total budgeted costs your budgeted operating profit <clears throat> Now your your federal and other income taxes, probably what you would do is the accounting department would uh, piece this together as best they could with sales, cost of goods sold, marketing and administrative costs, and figure out the budgeted operating profit and then go to the tax department and ask what they um, estimate the federal and other income taxes to be based upon the budgeted operating profit and so tax would figure that out let them know and they would plug that number in as federal and other income taxes and so that would uh, of course reduce your budgeted operating profit so your earnings after taxes is in this case one million one hundred forty nine thousand dollars now the company needs to estimate their cash flows both on a yearly basis as well as monthly and maybe even weekly because you want to make sure that you have enough cash at the end of the year certainly but you also want to make sure you have enough cash during the year and so the cash budget is a statement of cash on hand at the start of the budget period expected cash receipts expected cash disbursements and the re resulting cash balance at the end of the budget period okay cash receipts include collection of accounts receivable cash sales sales of assets borrowing issuing stock and anything else that results in a cash receipt after you've determined your cash receipts for the year you have to figure out your uh, cash disbursements material purchases uh, manufacturing costs, operating activities, debt repayment, acquisition of new assets, income taxes, dividends, and any, any anything else that results in an outflow of cash. And so um, they put that together from their uh, other budgets with the help of their other budgets and other inputs probably acquisition of new assets for example dividends for example reduction in long-term debt but a lot of those other costs we already uh, dealt with all right um, okay I'm going to stop here and I will begin with a new lecture here dealing with cash, cash collections on a monthly basis right after this.